Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be taking you through what upgrades I've made on my Trek Demane AL3. So I bought this about a year ago, it cost around a thousand pounds. So since then I've made loads and loads of different upgrades, lots of different changes. So I'm gonna take you through which ones I think are worth the money, which ones give you lots of performance gains and which ones are easy to install. So those are the three things I'm gonna be talking about for each upgrade. When I bought this stock, it weighed about 12 kilograms. I'll put the exact number up on the screen somewhere. So yeah. So the first upgrade I want to talk about is the pedals. So when you buy it stock, you get these pretty rubbish, plasticky looking pedals. I've never actually installed these on the bike, but they, they're just not not very interesting really. It's definitely a cost cutting measure. There's nothing special about these. Um, so what I installed are these. These are Shimano SPD pedals, M520s I believe. And these are clipless pedals, so your feet will click in and stay connected to the pedal. They cost about 20 to 30 pounds. So in terms of value, I think it's pretty good. Um, not an expensive upgrade, but certainly one which I would recommend doing because it's so cheap. Um, so installing the pedals is very easy. All you need is one of these, which is just a fancy wrench, really. Um, you can get ones which are designed for taking pedals off and it's probably worth getting one. All you need to do is just put it on the nut here and then just twist it and then it comes straight off. So really a very easy job, it takes about two, three minutes. Um, performance gain, um, with these pedals, you definitely do gain a bit of performance because your feet are clipped in. I would definitely say this is a worthwhile upgrade. So, so the next upgrade I want to talk about is the crank set. This is the stock one which comes with it. This is just the standard Shimano Sora. So this is a pretty heavy piece of kit. I think it's made of aluminum. This is nothing special really. It's just a standard 50, 34 crank set. So what I did is I upgraded it to this one. So this is a Magene P325CS. So this is a power meter crank set. So not only is this a bit lighter than the Shimano Sura one, it also gives you power data for both sides. So this goes for about two to 300 pounds, depending on how good you are at shopping around and what country you're in. So in terms of value for money, this is pretty much the cheapest dual sided power meter you can buy. So value for money is very good there. Ease of installation. Um, again, I would say this isn't the hardest thing to do. So all you need is a bottom bracket removal tool like this. Very easy to buy, you can get them on Amazon for like two or three pounds. And some Allen keys. You should really have a torque wrench for reinstalling it to make sure it's at the right tightness, but that's not essential. But yeah, ease of installation takes about 10 minutes. Not hard at all. I'll give it maybe like a three out of five for that. So yeah, overall, it's not hard to install. Anyone can do it, so that's not too bad at all. So the Magine weighs about 200 grams less than the stock Shimano Sora one. So you do gain a tiny bit of performance there, but 200 grams, it's not really much at all. But what is more interesting is the power meter aspect. So if you use power to train, you, you can definitely gain a lot of fitness just by following a training plan and making use of the power data you get from these. Overall, I would say the crank set itself, there's nothing wrong with the stock one, but if you want power data in a cheap way, I would recommend the machine. It is a pretty good piece of kit. Obviously there are other power meters out there. You can get um, pedal based ones as well. You've got to really consider whether you can be to change the whole um, crank set if just to get a power meter. Okay, so the next one is this. This is your cassette. And these go for about 10, 15 quid. So these are pretty damn cheap. So value for money, excellent. You can get loads of these. I have like three or four, depending on what I want to do. So why would you want to change your cassette? So this comes with an 11 to 32 on the back, which is fine really. It's pretty wide gearing, but I changed mine to an 11 to 34 because there were loads of hills around me. So I wanted those extra two teeth to help me get up without having to stand up so I could spin more easily. So when you change your cassette, you really need to consider what sort of terrain you're gonna be riding on. For example, if you have a really flat area, you can put like an 11 to 25 on or something like that. So in terms of performance, these do make a massive difference. If you're stuck with the wrong gearing, you can really hinder yourself. You'll be spinning out, you'll have to struggle a lot. So yeah, I would definitely say change your cassette to something which is suitable for you. I can't really recommend one for everyone, but you just need to try them out and see which one you like best. Like I said, 15 quid, can't really go wrong. So to change a cassette, you don't really need much. You just need a, a cassette tool like this and a chain whip. So those are not expensive, probably get them for like 15, 20 quid on Amazon. And yeah, it doesn't take long to change one. The first time you do it, you'll probably find it a bit difficult because you've really got to put your back into it to get enough force to get the cassette to come off. But after that, you'll find it much, much easier. Honestly, changing cassette is like a five, 10 minute job. The only thing is when you take it off, you'll want to clean it every time so that adds on like 20 minutes. Yeah, so do change your cassette to something suitable for you. Definitely worth upgrading. Okay, so the next one is compressionless brake housing. So if you look here, 
you can see I've got some red brake lines and gearing lines. So what this is supposed to do is really improve your braking. To be honest, I didn't find that much difference to the stock one. It does give you a tiny bit more modulation, but the problem with this is, is it is an absolute ball ache to install. Um, the Trek has internal cable routing, which means it is supremely difficult to get all your cables routed. Honestly, this took me hours upon hours to get it done, and I would recommend not doing that. Honestly, I think I would prefer to just pay someone to do that because it's absolutely a lot of work. In terms of performance, like I said, you don't really gain much. Maybe a, a slight difference if you can really, if you're really sensitive to braking, you might be able to feel a tiny difference, but I really couldn't. So yeah, value for money, it was about 20 quid. So maybe, mm, depends how much you value your time really. It's 20 quid and then you've got to spend hours installing it just for a tiny bit of performance increase. So yeah, like I said, that's up to you. So the next upgrade I made were the tires. So the stock tires are pretty hard compound. It's a 32 millimeter, I think it's an R1 hard case light or something like that. And those tires do not actually have that much grip. I didn't realize how bad the grip was until I upgraded. Like when I was going down hills, I could get the back wheel to slide so easily. And in the rain, it is just so easy to lock up your wheels. So with these new ones, the Continental GP 5000 STRs, these ones have so much more grip and it's actually ridiculous how much more grip, to be honest. I struggle, I find it really, really hard to lock the back wheel up. I, I really have to squeeze the brake as hard as I can to make, the wheels, to make the wheels lock up. So there's so much more grip. You feel a lot more confident going around corners. I won't comment on the comfort because I went from 32 millimeters to 25 millimeters. So it's not a direct comparison there. But overall, I'm very happy with the upgrade. It's a bit expensive. It's about 50 pounds per tire, maybe a bit less if you shop around a bit. But I think it's quite a good price considering how much better these tires are than the stock ones. Um, in terms of installation, these are very difficult to get on your rims. It's, it takes a long time, especially if you're not used to changing tires a lot. You've really got to, there's a technique to it and you probably will spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos on how to change tires. But yeah, once you've got them on, it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. I also have latex inner tubes. So those pair well with these as well. So you get less rolling resistance. You go a lot faster for less effort. So overall, a lot of performance gain for not that much money. So, so I would say the tires are definitely worth upgrading. Okay next. okay, next up are the wheels. And this is the most expensive upgrade by far. So these are nine Velo LV45 carbon wheels. And I have to say these were sent to me for free, but if you were to buy them in the shop, they would cost about 799 pounds. Um, my feelings on these are mixed so far. So for the money, you get a very minimal performance gain. It has the deep section aero part here, but I don't think you really gain that much more performance, especially for the money. I think these wheels should be the last thing you upgrade. I did notice a slight um, speed increase, like my rides went from about 29 kilometers per hour average to about 30. It's hard to say whether it's worth the money. If you're on a budget, then I would say definitely do other cheaper upgrades first. This should be the last thing you do, but you do save a lot of weight as well. So if you're climbing up lots of hills, then maybe it's worth it for you. So upgrading the tires, the inner tubes and the wheels saved me about two kilograms overall. This is definitely a big weight saver, the wheels, because the stock wheels are very, very heavy, but it's, it's definitely up to you whether you feel that heaviness is worth spending 700 pounds on. Would I have spent my own money on these wheels? Probably not. Do I like them a lot more than the stock wheels? Yes, I do. So like I said, you've got to decide whether, whether it's worth the money for you really. <clears throat> okay, so when I first bought the bike, completely stock with pedals, bottle cages, Garmin mount, that weighed 11.42 kilograms. So with all the upgrades I've made, let's see what the damage is. Let's see what the weight is. Okay, so weight after all the upgrades is 9.85 kilograms. So finally under the sub 10 kilogram mark. So it's a much lighter bike now overall, about 1.5 kilograms lighter. I still wouldn't call it a lightweight bike at all. It's still, to be honest, still a bit of a beefcake, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. I see no reason to upgrade from this. If you're happy with your bike, then so be it. There's really nothing I would change, to be honest. I really like this bike. I think if anyone is in the market, this is a good beginner bike. There's lots of room for upgrades if you want. And yeah, overall, 
I'm very happy. I think anyone else who bought it should be as well. That's it from me. Let me know in the comments what upgrades you make to your bikes, which ones are worth the money, which ones aren't. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe and share. It really helps me out. All right, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.